It's been a while. I miss you. I miss you as well. Thank you, sir. This is like my favorite people. Oh, thank you. Look at this. I got a fan. I know. <laughs> this one doesn't. You look, look good, by the way. That's because of her. Yeah. This is the person that makes me look good, ladies and gentlemen. Emily. This Without her, <laughs> I just I look like a fat piece of shit. With her, I look like a well polished fat piece of shit. <laughs> One of my good? favorite people. I love this guy so much. Feel this, dude. Take oh, a hit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? Oh, my God, Face, dude. neck, and chest. Isn't that you insanely want powerful? You. I want to be you. You can now. get this online, dude. This is a buck ninety-eight, and this really? thing is, the battery pack's more expensive. There was a lady from uh, In Demand who, who, I was sweating like a pig yesterday, and she said, I have this fan that works amazing. And she talked about this fan for 20 minutes. <laughs> 20 minutes and you know at a certain point you're just being polite going really a good fan is it and stuff finally she like i was like look she was like you got to try i was like if you bring me the fan after the sell you've done i will totally use your fan and stuff so she gave me a fan for the first time in my life might be the first time ever a salesman was a hundred percent accurate the thing was everything she promised and more. She kept saying, like, it is very powerful for a fan of its size. I said, are the blades metal? She said, no, they're plastic. You can let them hit your tongue. I was like, come on, man. She oversold this fan. And then when I used it, it turned out she didn't oversell it, it at all. It is kind of fucking crazy. It is crazy, right? right? It's like, really fucking cool. <laughs> for two, I mean, it, for two grown men who've been sweating it up at Comic-Con, yeah. like, to find the perfect fan, or not even perfect, one that works in your face, face, neck, and chest, that's a huge review. I looked for a name brand. I couldn't find it, man. I asked the lady. She said she picked it up at a bodega in Queens. It was a buck ninety-eight. I was like, "That's gold. That's like stumbling into a Fabergé egg." <laughs> like, you you underpaid for a miracle. Anyway, we're fans of the fan. Yeah, let's, yeah. Let's, 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 let's you have to be at Comic Con because yeah. you sweat, man. Like, I, dude, I have, right? Thin people sweat at Comic Con. That's how bad it is, dude. Like, I sweat when I breathe. You know, if I wake <laughs> up, I'm just like, oh, I'm already. <laughs> perspiring but at comic-con you see thin people in shape people you see slave leias who are wearing barely anything sweating, sweating like yeah. fucking crazy and yesterday was really humid so uh today's not too bad though it's but it, bad. so a good fan is important well dude i gotta say this trailer kicked my ass thank you it, it it's kicked like, my ass as this well is a different... let me give props for yeah. the trail a24 is putting out the movie cats that did spring breakers under the skin um, other movies, they're like the, to me, they're like the Miramax of 21st century. Like right. The, back when I was a kid, Miramax did all the interesting movies. That's the, I was delighted to wind up there with Clerks and stuff. With A24, it's kind of like Miramax all over again. Like they're a company that's just doing the weirdest, uh, most interesting stuff, building yeah. from scratch. Um, they all work in one room. It's kind of cool. So they were a company that I sought out because I saw what they did with Spring Breakers. And I was like, they can make the Harmony Corinne movie gross double digits in the yeah, 21st right? century. Right? These, these cats would know how to market a walrus movie. So we got in bed with them, thank God. And they took the trailer to a company called Buddha Jones. And these cats cut an amazing trailer, to me amazing, because I've seen the movie. And it's amazing because they show you nothing. It's like maybe it's taken, the trailer's taken from maybe 20% of the movie. So the rest of the movie is not represented. And the thing we never show you is the walrus. Mm -hmm. Like the trailer is cut in such an elegantly classy way where you're like, oh, maybe it's all on his head, like at the end of the day, because I don't see no evidence of a walrus. Like, uh, but I'm here to tell you, man, they, they sold it well like that. Because yeah. I'm sure there'll be some people like, I don't want to go see no movie about a guy who turns into a walrus. But presented like this, they'll be like, ooh, that looks classy. But we do flat out turn him into a walrus. Like halfway through the movie, he is in a big rubber suit going like, ugh. It's, it will bend your mind, man. And not in a way where you're like, I feel sorry for everybody involved. What a disaster. You'll be like, holy fuck, it's a gut punch. And it lives with you like herpes for the rest of your life. You'll never be able to wash your brain of seeing the human walrus, man. And How it's kind of wacky. How are you getting with it's this? Not, that's the weird that's thing. Bad. It's not. I heard you saying it's like family. It's it, honestly like, well, I mean, I'm, I guess my perspective is different, but I, like, if my kid was five, six years old, I yeah. would take her to this movie. Really? She wouldn't understand, like, you know, most of the adult themes and stuff like that, so she'd probably be eating snacks. But the moment it got into, like, walrus country, it, it will it will capture a kid's imagination as well. I'm certainly not advocating people bring children, but I'm telling you, there's something about it where you're like, this is grizzly, this is horrible. Oh, he's a walrus? Oh, this is cute. You know, there's, <laughs> there's it's just, it takes it to the precipice of, of horror. That's why I can't call it horror. It's just the whole movie feels like a descent into madness because even the audience becomes comfortable with something that is just so profane and bizarre, watching a human being become a, a walrus. It, 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 it's nuts, kids. I can't even say it's good. I can't tell you it's bad i could just tell you it's a such an experience like 
for me, you know, people, uh, you read a lot of reactions online, oh, all I do is sequel, remakes, and blah, blah, blah. Th this movie is, I'm not saying it's the most original movie it's ever been made. It has hints of uh, so many movies to it. Obviously, Human Centipede, yeah. obviously, Misery. Um, uh, Island, Dr. Moreau. Dr. Yeah, Moreau yeah, yeah. with the uh, human, human to animal and stuff. Um, but for me, once you see the movie, it's like very, uh, my Patronuses were like The Shining. I certainly wasn't trying to make The Shining, but I, I looked at Kubrick's composition for The Shining over and over again. I was like, all right, man, we'll just compose like that. Yeah. Compose elegantly. They say steal from the best. So I was like, what did he do? He composed very elegantly. I was like, all right, so that key, gives you an unsettling mood. Because if everything is symmetrical, once you mm -hmm. fuck with it, boom, you get instant jolt and Stuff. So suddenly I was like, all right, let that, the shining is our spirit animal or our Patronus, if you will. I mean, Native Americans don't like you to use spirit animal. Patronus. <laughs> it's our Patronus. And then um, the next movie was um, a, a movie that I loved as a kid and I still love now, but it was the horror movie that was safe for me as a kid. And that's why when I think about Tusk and go like, yeah, it would be all right for a kid. Uh, American Werewolf in London was, oh, yeah. was a movie that like, you know, my cousin saw all the hardcore horror stuff, all the slasher movies, everything. And I could only go so far. My parents would let me see some stuff and some stuff would freak me out. But American Werewolf in London was horrifying. Like, it cut throats in, in, in the dream sequence. And there's some real war in that movie. Yeah. But there's also levity. So as a, as a kid, I think I was nine or 10 years old. What year is it, 80, 81? It was 80, I think it was 81. 81, yeah. so I'm 11 years old. So I can sit there and be like, ah! And then like there'll be some moment with like Griffin Dunn holding up Mickey Mouse going, hi, David. And he's like, stop that. And you're, you laugh, you're like, ah, ah, ah. And so it settles you and then they rebuild the tension. So rather than like one long build of tension like a lot of horror movies do, and I'm not good enough to do that, I, I can do this. I can build tension and then release it. Build tension and release it. It's like tantric sex with Sting. You <laughs> never, never come until the end, but you just build it up and release it. Build it up, release it. So it's fun. I, I, I mean, I, I would love to call it a horror movie, but I think genre uh, enthusiasts would be like, this is strictly not a horror movie. I don't know what, what to call it. Man. I know it's mine. I don't know if it's fantasy. Like, you know, to me, fantasy is Game of Thrones. And that's oh, there brilliant. You go, there you go. This, is, this is just weird. This is just a podcast that became a movie, I guess. Thank <laughs> you.